The late 40s and 50s, what many consider to be the blackest era in American history. No, wait, that can't be right. Surely the 70s were way more black. No, no, that's what, with not... Superfly, Fat Albert, Shaft, Disco? Total blackitude. No. Kids on roller skates with giant afros and ghetto blasters. Blackity, black, black. Stop. Reggie Jackson, Muhammad Ali, the Harlem Globetrotters. The 70s proved that all black people were good at sports. What? What's that thing you're doing with your head? Shaking it in disbelief. Now can we please go from line two? Senator Joe McCarthy led the charge into the very heart of Hollywood, using fear and paranoia to blacklist suspected communists. Oh, come on. This makes it all sound like it was a bad thing. It was a bad thing. Oh, you weren't even there. How would you know? Well, I, I know that hundreds of livelihoods were ruined. Not mine. I did great. Never had more fun. Fun? Absolutely. I was in there testifying every other week, fingering commies left, right, and center. F fingering? Yes, fingering. Fingering morning, noon, and night. It was a regular finger fest. All you needed was a smart haircut, a sense of moral superiority, and a magic finger. Uh, I wouldn't be saying that out loud. Don't see why not. Thanks to people like me, people like me can say anything they want. Well, how about line three, then? In three, <coughs> two... Hollywood luminaries were called forward and condemned by the dozens, including Charlie Chaplin, got him, Orson Welles, need him, Zero Mostel, got him. Weston, what are you doing? No, oh, I'm just counting off the ones I personally testified against. And did you personally know that they were communists? Didn't have to. The magic finger knew. Besides, I was secretly sleeping with Zero Mostel's girlfriend. Had to get him out of the picture. If he ever found out, he would have killed me. Sat on me. Hey, Zero, a funny thing happened on the way to your girlfriend's. So you did all that because of some personal agenda? No. I did it to win the horns. Oh, I see. That's a sentence that made perfect sense. <laughs> Ronnie Reagan had this awesome Viking hat with these big bloody bullhorns on the side. So one night, me, Ronnie, Bob Hope, and old Charlie Heston are throwing back jello shots and talking about the State of the Union, and this wager just sort of came up. Winner got the horns. A uh, bet? Yeah. Reagan was showing off, saying he'd blown the whistle on 16 pinkos, but <laughs> everyone knew he was full of shit. So we started from scratch and had ourselves a little informathon. Don't you mean ratathon? Hey, only criminals rat. Patriots point fingers. I dread to ask, how many did you get blacklisted? I don't like that word. Blacklist sounds like we only went after black people. We didn't. We mostly went after Jews. We weren't racist. Fine. How many? Thirty-three. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. I could have done way more, but apparently children can't be communists. But do you know Shirley Temple's real hair color? Red as her thoughts on universal health care. Well, who won? It came down to a draw between me and Bob Hope. Had to settle it with a good old-fashioned naked Indian arm wrestle. Thank you for the mental picture. And he's short, but he's got... Powerful hips. Flip me clear into a glass coffee table. That's where I got this scar. Please, please, please put that thing away. Hey, nobody said fighting communism was pretty. Louis Bunnell, he was a spick. Carl Foreman, a Jew. Canada Lee, black guy. Myron McCormick, a patty. Paul Robeson, black guy. Philip Loeb, Jew. Burgess Meredith, Penguin, see? Black and white. Equal opportunity fingering. Totally not racist.